which is in true, so anybody's opinion falls by the wayside. Sort of like the truth will stand, the rest will fall away. Mm. <laughs> You're no longer be able to hide behind. Don't y'all love her red hair? It's just gorgeous. <laughs> I think it's so pretty. Your eyes are pretty too, darling. Um, now throw you off. <laughs> <laughs> just a tad. <laughs> um, you know. Try and shake you up. Try and shake you up, honey. <laughs> To relax me a yeah, little, little bit. bit. <laughs> you no longer will be able to maintain that didn't get the breaks. Or more impressively, the one who simply couldn't overcome the massive odds you faced as a child. No one had it harder than you. I skipped a whole sentence. That's okay. <laughs> Sound good to me. I love it. All right, so what we're saying is, what you're saying is no one had it any tougher than us. Whatever road we had, that's the road we needed, and that's the road our soul chose. Because as I've discussed on this show so many times, our soul is ruthless, and it does not care whether we're coming kicking and screaming. It's going to have experience on this earth, and it will be those experiences that are locked with and laced with a lot of pain that we learn our greatest lessons and it will uncover our passion. So when we want to sit around and gripe and complain and whine and oh, you just don't know my life, you don't know what I had to overcome and when I was a little, we all Been there. are right. And none of us gonna get out of here alive. You think we are? Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. And people don't know how to let go. I hear you, sweetie. But I'm, I'm they hang on to their past, therefore they wonder why they can't move forward because they won't let go of what happened in the past. Uh, so they can't move forward. That's right. If you were So you're full. You're full of your past. That would be just like you were full of a... You've just finished eating. Could you turn around and eat another meal if you were full? No. So what you're saying is let go of your past so that you can be in the present. Yeah. Then you don't have to worry about the future. Because you'll be right here. Right. I like that. You'll be right here. She said you'll be right here. All right. Uh, how many times do you... How many times do you fall into the first tank? No, no one ever really has ever understood or appreciated you. All right, that's the first tank. All right. People don't understand you, they don't appreciate you. They overlook you, you do so much for people. If you <coughs> think you're doing so much for people, then you haven't done enough because you're gauging what you're doing and your ego's in charge there. So you better do a little bit more to where you can start and not have an idea about how much you're doing or not doing. You had to hide your most most of your life from your family and friends. You must come clean with yourself and who it is you are and what it is you truly want. Stop. Wow. So you've been hiding. That's the second tank. Have you been hiding? Has the person that you've been operating on and as, is it a fake? And the real person, will a real Mitzi come forward? Will a real Brandy come forward? Will a real Paula come forward? I mean, we can't possibly, it said, passion is very selective. I love that. Passion is very selective. Do nothing else but be available to find yours. <coughs> and so you're going to live with that war with you, inside of you, until you release, let go, and just be what you are. And don't have a thought about how it looks to somebody or what somebody perceives, what you meant that you said that he didn't say that she said. That's called news coat toter. We talked about that last week. You must overall get rid I'm of. Staring at you, Mitzi. I'm well, skipping <laughs> sentences again. <laughs> Stop saying you were deprived of anything. Whoa! The Clorox picture of awakening will involve a process of, of elimination. A cleaning. Elimination. So you're telling me right here that the Clorox process, you got to eliminate some things. That's the same thing you're talking about. It's always good to clean out your closet, isn't it? Mm-hmm. On a monthly basis. On a weekly basis. <laughs> she was going to come back and say that. <laughs> okay. A cleaning out the closets. <laughs> if you will. 
You must overall get rid of certain aspects of your life that are currently hindering your personal progress. You will begin your with your nasty attitude. Mm. It reeks. Nasty attitude. Nasty attitude. Brandy, would you know anything about that? Huh? No, Brandy said no, she'll know nothing about that. Sandy, you know anything about a nasty attitude? Oh, Sandy's back there shaking her head up and down. I think that says yes. Missy, you know anything about it? Mm -hmm. I do too. You ask my youngins. Or what do they say in the mountains? Youngins. Ask youngins. Ask youngins. Next, send everyone that has attended your pity party home. It's time you spent some well-deserved time in worthwhile community service. I hear you. Stop, 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 stop. People most of the time think that community service has something to do with if you've gone to jail or prison, you come out and you're going to work here, pay off some kind of debt to society. But it's saying get out there in your community. Get out there and start volunteering. If you've got so much time on your hands to be a whining and a wallowing and a whipping and a whamping and everything else, you've got too much. You need to get out and find out where you can be of service, community service. Find that you might just find what your passion is. See, you're going to stumble over it. It's not going to come up and tap you on the shoulder. It's going to be. It's going to come to you while you're doing something else. Because you've been hiding from yourself, you wouldn't recognize it, like you said in the beginning of that. You wouldn't know who you were if you if she came and introduced herself to you. No. Is that it? Oh. Okay, go ahead. Well, just a little bit more. <laughs> Get in the closet and don't come out until you can stop lying to yourself and others. Start the process of physically unloading the access in your home, car, and life. Realize just how gluttonous your appetite is, then paint it. How about it? Then paint it. How about that, Nancy? I think I brought something, didn't I? Didn't I bring something today to, yeah, right here. Yeah. Um, let's pull this drawing pad. Now, you know I, you didn't think you were going to be drawing today. I know, did you? I know. Here. You got some markers up there? All right, it said paint it. So, what'd it say? What'd it say to paint? Some kind of gluttonous appetite. Yes. That's what it said. All right, let's paint gluttonous appetite. Let's do that. Gluttonous appetite. How in the world do you paint a gluttonous appetite? Just paint anything, draw anything, any way you want to, honey. Whatever comes out of you is going to be right. Can't be wrong. Remember what you said? You're all the time thinking something's right or wrong in the beginning. Nothing ain't right, nothing ain't wrong. That's all it is. Gluttonous appetite. We are gluttonous human beings. And the moment we realize that and come to terms with that and accept that and operate on that, because you know what? Passion is gluttonous. Passion is unstoppable. That's how the greatest minds and the greatest philosophers, greatest inventors follow those instincts and things happen. So paint it, it said. Paint it. Let that energy come out. So you don't have to have any kind of idea of what you're going to do. Most of the time when you're planning, it gets stale. Bland, like we were talking about. Somebody, you eat a, a meal and it don't taste good. There ain't no sexual energy in that. So, let me see. I want me another color. All right. Let me see. What you want to do next, honey, while we're painting gluttony? Let's do your board. Do the board? Okay. We're going to, I've been talking about that. You're responsible for me to bring that today because you've been telling me that I've been talking about it. But I never brought it, so today I brought it. All right, what Mitzi and I are doing here, we're painting gluttony. That's what we're doing while we're talking here on Mode of Cosmic Therapy this afternoon. We are painting gluttony. We don't have an idea. We don't have a plan. We don't have a inkling of destination. We're just following wherever our hands are leading us. And if we would realize that and accept that in the run of a day, we'd be less ill by the night time. 
All right, so I got to have those cards, sweetie, if I'm going to use the board so I can pull one. All right, let's get them out of this bucket. Okay. These are the Mode of Cosmic Therapy cards. These are cards and a game that I invented. It's a lot of fun. I use them pretty much every week with Bridget. Bridget had to had a project in school today. That's why she's not here. Ah, cease to strive, worry, or complain. Is that one, Mitzi? Okay. And we had that delegate last week. I remember that. And insolent we had on another week. I'm gonna take those out. Intoxication we had on another week. Try to. And regret is the prayer of fools. We had that on a week. So, let's see, I'm going to try to... Let me flip it away. Yeah, just a minute. Okay. Oh, that's pretty, Mitzi. That's your gluttony. That's pretty. Okay, you want to pull it? Just pull one, which one you want to pull. All right, what we got, baby? Do not plan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We are going to stop a minute, and I'm going to get me, go ahead, and write that on your board. Do not plan. Do not plan. Okay, and I'm going to put, today just happens to be 9, what, 10, oh, 09, I think. Okay, do not plan. Now, you know, we start painting now, I get all lost. lost. So, we'll have to get back to these books, or we might not. I just don't know whether we will or not. Because I love these markers. That is the funniest thing. Okay. You want me to get another? Yeah, I want you to get another book. card. No, get another card. Is so we can use card? it. Yeah. Okay. So we can use that board. And I wanted to color some more anyway. That's why I told you that. Mm -hmm. Those three stuck together. Okay. What you got that time? King David, 21st century. Okay, let's find him on that board. You want to? You know, Mose, you did notice I didn't move to go get it because I don't want to quit coloring. I love the color. Lord okay, Christ. King David. You're looking for King David. I know which one it is, oh. but I'm going to see if you can't find it while I finish doing this. Can you find it? King David. Hmm? No? No. Okay, wait a minute. I'm going to get back to you, Mitzi. You <laughs> just wait and see. All right. Woo! That's right, pretty, ain't it? Okay, Paula. You got to go on quick color a minute and try to find that picture she's well I like this one like this that's pretty 21st century yeah I'll tell you which one it is right um, over there no good gracious uh, King David I think it's this one right here right there look and see pull that thing yes, up yes it is how you know pull that top of it. that's it okay all these are these cards we've been using every week and finally you're able to see the board you want to zero zero in on it can and, you and the middle one brandy brandy mm -hmm. can you zero in on that middle the middle camera honey thank you brandy's having to do triple job today but anyway we're talking about king david the 21st century and this whole board has got different various different paintings from our uh, artists and so Brandy's going to zoom in so you can see King David. Just point to it. All right, come down. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. That's King David. That's pretty raw. That's pretty natural, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's the bare facts. That's getting authentic, honey. Let's see. Is it a nightmare or is it real life? 
Okay. Oh, Brandy, here's my gluttony so far. Okay, that's my gluttony so far. Hmm, what does that look like, Brandy? What do you think, Lisa? Do not plan. Seaweed. Seaweed. Hmm. Okay. So she's in the bottom of the ocean. All right, Mitzi, hold yours up there. Here's Mitzi's. Brandy. Look at yours, honey. I see a part of a hummingbird. Don't you? Mm hmm That's joy. Joke's on you. Okay. Anyway, let's read about this a little bit. You just keep coloring if you want to, sweetie. Is it a nightmare or is it real life? You tell me. Is it a nightmare or is it real life, Mitzi? What do you think? Today, I mean, every day. Every day? Any day, right now? <laughs> is it a nightmare or is it real life? I'd call it a nightmare. Okay. Talk because to you me. have too many thoughts of your day. When you wake up out of the bed, you start thinking of what's going to happen. What am I going to do? How much money am I going to do today? Or, uh, I mean, you have too many thoughts. So how can you be in this life with that many thoughts going on in your head? You can't be with B1. Wow, thank you, honey. That is so true. I like that. All right. Um, you are standing naked and alone, full of anxiety and concern. And that's what you feel every morning when you, it's you against the world, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's you that's going to pay the bills. It's you that's going to worry, worry, worry. You're going to be wary, but you're going to um, worry about your baby. You know, you're gonna, you know, it's just full of all those things that you said, thoughts all the time, just pressing down on you. You're never just, are you ever a moment without those thoughts? When you're asleep. When you're asleep, and then they're transposed into dreams. Dreams, yeah, so no is the answer. Okay, life has not produced for you what you anticipated. No, because we all wanna be rich and famous, and everybody, I mean, just, we want something other than what we have. Right. Well, this, this isn't enough, huh? We got the wrong billing when we come back. <laughs> we didn't get the man we love. We didn't get the house we wanted. We didn't get the um, fame and the fortune and the, like you're talking about. All right, let's see. You are utter